Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Susan and thank you for stopping by. Whether this is your first time or you've been here before, I appreciate it. Thank you. So today I'm going to uh, do a monthly wrap up of March 2020's books. Henry is already meowing. He is so predictable. <laughs> um, so I made it through 11 books this month. Um, reading is definitely uh, my go-to distraction. So um, yeah, but 11, that's not far off even if I didn't need the distraction. But um, okay, Henry. Henry, you want to look at the camera? Maybe say goodbye? Let mama do the video? <laughs> Usually I talk about the books from what I read first to last, but I think I'm going to do it the other way around this time. So the book I just finished yesterday, I just finished Malice yesterday, March 31st. Um, I was watching a YouTube channel, someone I had just found, um, Hardback Hearts, I think. I'll put her link below. And I watched a few of her videos and I really am enjoying them. And... Um, and she she recommended this book uh, by Kiego Higashino, and he is a very popular Japan. He's very popular in Japan. He's like one of their most famous um, fiction writers. It, this originally came out in 1996. Uh, the star rating on Goodreads is 3.95. I gave it four stars. So. It's a murder mystery, but who did it isn't the primary mystery. Um, it's much more why. And it took so many, I don't read a lot of mysteries. So maybe if you're huge into mysteries, you're like, this is so predictable. I, I don't read a lot. So I'm, I love to be surprised by these. And I was definitely surprised by this one. It took so many twists and turns. It was a lot of fun. And it was it, what I kind of envisioned was like a long rope that has knots every, you know, foot. And so you'd get to that first knot and, and you'd untangle it and it would take a while. And then you think you got, you got a grip on it, but then another foot is another knot and you untangle that. It was just really, really good. It's about um, two friends, if, if they are friends, they're two writers in Japan and they've known each other since childhood and one of them is killed and it unfolds from there. And I tell you, I listened to this on audiobook. I wasn't thrilled with the narrator, but it didn't matter. The story was so good that I was in. I loved it. I definitely recommend it. So that was Malice. The next one um, that I read this month was Writers and Lovers by Lily King. The reason I even picked this up was I saw, I, if you've watched my videos, you know I love Ann Patchett, and um, she had recommended reading uh, Writers and Lovers. I think this just came out in 2020. Yes, it published in 2020. It's a 4.08 star rating on Goodreads. I gave it a 2.5. Which makes me sad because I think Anne Patchett is the goddess of, you know, modern fiction and <laughs> anything she says I want to subscribe to, but that's not the case with this one. But like I said, it's got over a four rating on Goodreads, so I am in the minority on this one. And I was kind of stretching the 2.5. I gave it the 0.5 because it's not that her writing's bad. I listened to it on audiobook. It's just the story. Like, I didn't care about it. Um, and I should have, I mean, it's about a writer in, uh, Boston. So two of my favorite things right there, writers in Boston. <laughs> and usually that's enough to make me enjoy a book, but like nothing surprised me or intrigued me or delighted me. It was just like, it was a story, uh, that personally, I was kind of like when it was over, I was like, what was the point of that? I kept, I kept with it, uh, with the audiobook because I, I thought there's got to be a point. Everyone's talking about this book and loving it, but I made it to the end and it, it 
just just wasn't wasn't for me. Um, but don't let me deter you because uh, maybe if if you're hesitant, maybe read some reviews online uh, because I am. This is just one woman's opinion. The um, the next book is City of Girls, and I loved this. City of Girls came out in 2019. Elizabeth Gilbert um, of Eat, Pray, Love fame and signature of all things and big magic. Um, it is a 4.06 on Goodreads. I gave it four stars. This was just, when I started this, I knew, I knew from the start, this is exactly what I needed and I didn't know I needed. Like it was exactly what I needed to read after some of the reads I had right before this that were a little heavier and um, not that this isn't heavy. That's the weird thing about this book. Like on the surface, the description of the book, it makes it sound like it's a light, fluffy romp of reading. But this is Elizabeth Gilbert and nothing is that simple. I feel like... She's so wise and she's so tender hearted that the relationships she she creates between some of these characters go much deeper than the surface of this book looks like. <laughs> Sorry for the cat interruption. Um the the description is um Vivian is our main character and she's telling this book as a flashback um, to the 1940 when she was 19 years old and she had um, gotten kicked out of college and her parents sent her to live with her aunt in the theater district of New York City. <laughs> so um, it's about her awakening of um, who she wanted to become and you know at the cusp of adulthood and then it takes we we follow her through her life um i love this book but it may not be for everyone vivian is a free spirit and so you might not appreciate uh the lifestyle she's chosen i to me that was just such a small part of the book that i didn't care <laughs> i just thought it was so wonderfully written and it was just such a comfort to read. I read it in two days and this is not a thin book, but I just enjoyed it so much. For me, it just, it was just what I needed because right before reading this, I read <laughs> The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. And this is quite a sad, um, I hate to say depressing, but it's, you know, this is um, Pat Barker's telling of the Trojan War through the women's eyes and specifically through and really need to look up how to say her name, Briseis, um, you know, the the Trojan queen who was taken um, as Achilles prize for his um, battle achievements, you know, Achilles and the Greeks come to her, her city, they kill her husband, they kill her brothers. They, um, you know, they plunder the city and take its riches and then they take the women as slaves. And she is basically Achilles' bed slave. And um, so it's told from her perspective specifically. But um, I really, I, I gave this book four stars um, on Goodreads. Let's see. It's a 3.91. So I'm pretty close uh, with the average. Um, uh it was very well written. To me, it's not it's not along the lines of storytelling like Madeline Miller's Circe and Song of Achilles, but it's still very, very good. But you kind of need, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. In my opinion, to really enjoy this book, which I did enjoy it, even though it's, you know, disturbing and sad, to enjoy it, you kind of have to be already invested in the Trojan War and Achilles, whether that's through reading the Iliad or reading the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I had read the Song of Achilles before, like two weeks before reading this. So I was invested in the story and I just think it was very, very well written. And I definitely recommend it if you are into the Trojan War, if you're into the Iliad or Song of Achilles. 
All right. Um, before that, uh, this one I listened to, to on audiobook, and I already talked about it in my vlog video from, was that just last week? I mean, seriously, who, who knows where the time is going? Um, but it's the um, Long Bright River by Liz Moore. And this came, it's a 4.17 stars on, um, on Goodreads. I gave it four stars, uh, came out in 2020. Um, this, just real quickly, since I have talked about this already, um, this is about two sisters living outside of Philadelphia. One sister is on the police force. The other sister is in the grips of the opioid addiction. And um, they don't really speak anymore, although they were very close growing up. They had a rough childhood, um, basically were raised by their maternal grandmother. And um, but when her younger sister got into drugs, different things happened that really tore them apart. But the older sister, the one who's on the police force, is always trying to keep an eye out for her younger sister. And she goes weeks without seeing her. And so she starts getting worried. And um, in the town where they live, there have been several murders of of women in, who seem to be in the same situation as her younger sister. So the story is about their relationship and trying to find her sister. And then it'll flash back to when they were children. Um, I was afraid just because of the stress that everyone in the globe is feeling that this would be too disturbing, but it wasn't. This was a great distraction. The audiobook was wonderful. Again, I gave it four stars. Um, I pretty much ate it up. I, I listened to it that whole time I was cleaning that one day, which was eight hours. And then I woke up the next morning and finished the book on audio. It was just, it was that good. All right. The next book, um, <laughs> this one, this one didn't go quite as well. Okay. So the next book is You Were There Too by Colleen Oakley. It's a 3.93 on um, Goodreads, so nearly four stars, but I gave it two and a half stars. What attracted me to this book was the premise. So a happily married woman, you know, with her sweet, loving husband, but for years, long before she even met her husband, the same man has been showing up in her dreams. And I don't mean daydreams. I mean, in her nightly dreams, this same man has been in her dreams for years. Turns out he's a real man and she sees him at the grocery one day. And then turns out he has dreamt of her too. So doesn't that sound like a, like a really cool premise? I just thought, oh, that's unique. But that's as far as it went for me. Um, it was just okay. I finished it in one evening. So how bad could it be? Um, uh, but it just fell flat in my opinion. Like nothing amazed me or surprised me with the turns the book took. I was just like, okay. And I just, I love to be amazed or surprised or, oh my gosh, I wouldn't have thought of that. But again, that's just me. It's almost four stars on, on Goodreads. So I am in the minority on that one. So take, take my opinion for what it's worth. Um, Okay, the next read was a reread, and I won't talk long about this because I've already talked about it so, so much. Um, the Dutch House, I reread it because um, we were going to, we were going to talk about it in my book club for um, March. But as you might imagine, as I'm sure many of you, the book club was canceled due to COVID-19. Um, so I, I reread it, but I listened to it on audiobook, uh, which is the Tom Hanks narration, which is how I read it the first time, even though I do have the hardcover book. And I enjoyed it even more the second time. The Dutch House, that's my kind of piece of contemporary fiction. Anne Patchett, I gave it five stars. I gave it five stars. The first time I read it, I give it five stars again. Um, knowing how it ended made me appreciate the book even more. It's a brother-sister relationship. I talk about it in one of my vlogs. I'll leave a link to the vlog below. So I won't bore you guys with my opinion again. Suffice it to say, five stars. I recommend it. That said, I have friends who did not enjoy it so much. So there's that. It is mixed reviews on Goodreads. I personally think it's Anne Petchett's best book to date. 
All right, before Dutch House, I read Peace Like a River. Again, I talked about this in pretty much depth. This was a five-star book for me. I won't go into the details in this um, wrap-up since I talked about it before, but I'll link that. In fact, I think it's the same vlog that I talked about the Dutch House, so I'll link that below. Along those lines, also in that um, that vlog, I talked about the writing life. I ended up giving this a 3.5 stars. <laughs> I think at the time of the vlog, I wasn't sure how I, I was going to rate it, but um, yeah, 3.5 stars stars, uh, this is really only going to be attractive to people who love writing or love to read about writers. I don't think this is for the masses. I don't think a lot of people would get into it. It's just a slim little book, but it is very thickly written. It's uh, poetic prose. Um, and while I enjoyed it immensely, it was a 3.5 when I took all things into consideration. Um, also, Nine Perfect Strangers. I actually lent the book to my friend last night. Um, that's that Leanne Moriarty book that I also talked about in that vlog. So I won't go into details here, but I did give it three stars. And then the first book of the month I read, and I already touched about on it a little bit in um, today, The Song of Achilles. Um, I gave this four stars. Uh, I loved it. Um, this this was a gift. Uh, it was a surprise. I got an Amazon box one day and I'm like, oh, that's weird. I wasn't supposed to have anything delivered today. But my my husband's sister, Bet, sent it to me after she saw my review of Circe and how much I loved it. Circe was five stars, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point in my books. I loved Circe. So I was actually nervous to read the Song of Achilles because when I love a book, like my soul has fallen in love with a book, it is very hard for me to read like the sequel to that book. Not This is not a sequel, but it's very hard for me to read a sequel. Like I still haven't worked up the courage to read the sequel to Beartown because I love Beartown so much, but I have it over there. Maybe this month I'll work up the courage. Um, but, but sometimes it's even hard for me to read another book by that same author because I was so in love with the first one. And if I'm disappointed by the next one, like, will that mess up my whole reading psyche? Because I, I have issues. And um, so it took a little courage to muster up before I was ready to read this but thank you Bet, because this was a beautiful book not quite as good as Circe this was a solid four stars though like solid four stars she, Madeline Miller man she is amazing she really is the way she tells a story so this is um in general the story of the Trojan War as told by Madeline Miller um, but specifically, it's about Patroclus and Achilles and their love story. They um, they grew up together, essentially. Uh, Patroclus accidentally killed a boy when he was uh, uh, maybe 10, I think. And he got banished from his father's kingdom and went to live in Achilles' father's kingdom. And they just became best friends, each other's companions. And then as they grew into young men, it became a romantic relationship. And um, again, this is Madeline Miller's version. Um, so you will see differences between this and the Iliad's portrayal of it. But this is just so beautiful. It's a book about character too. And the way we perceive a person of character now is so different than how the Greeks perceived character because what they saw as things to honor were, you know, heroics in battle and how many richer riches you've been able to plunder in battle and how many slaves you have. And now <laughs> we don't look at it that way. Um, and in this version, of course, Achilles is the mighty hero, the mighty warrior, but Patroclus is not a warrior. He is a healer. He is a gentle spirit. He and Achilles while they're very opposite, they're, they're soulmates. And so it's their love story. And I think she just does it so beautifully, really. I mean, it is a tragic love story, obviously, but I love this book. And I know so many people love this book. But those are the 11 books I read this month. And um, thanks for sticking it out with me if you have. Um, hopefully, April will be another great reading month. Who knows what it will bring? I am not doing any TBRs. I just, whatever my emotions want to read, that's where I'm going. So anyway, thanks guys. Hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week. Bye.